Hello everyone, welcome back to another Team Player Gaming video. Today I will be covering 10 teamwork spells and one cantrip, so technically 11 teamwork spells, that you should absolutely take if you are a primal spellcaster, like a druid. Please note that I have covered some of these spells in my Secrets of Magic teamwork spell series, so definitely go check that out. But before we get started, did you know that you can get my videos early if you pledge to me on Patreon? That's right. I post my videos on Patreon at least 12 hours before they go up on YouTube. Also, if you pledge at Team Leader or higher, then you can get a character sheet to go along with any build videos I do. If you're interested in either of these perks, you can check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. Now, back to the video. So. For our cantrip for this video, I want to talk about Healing Plaster. With this spell, Primal Casters no longer need healer's tools to make medicine checks. That's right, they can save the 5 gold they usually spend on healer's tools and use it on something else. In fact, the entire party doesn't need healer's tools anymore because the substance created by this spell can be used by anyone. The only thing is, this substance cannot be used to treat poison or disease. The fact is, you're not going to run into that type of thing very often, especially at low levels. And at high levels, druids and other primal casters have access to other spells that deal with that. This spell is available to primal casters only. Which means, if you want this spell, you gotta be a primal caster. For the first level spell for this video, we have another spell that is only available to primal casters. I am talking about Protector Tree. This spell creates a tree within 30 feet that lasts for one minute. This tree protects any allies that are adjacent to it. When said allies are attacked, the tree interposes its branches and takes the damage first. Any damage beyond what it takes to reduce the tree to zero hit points is dealt to the original target. The tree isn't large enough to stop anyone from moving through its square. It has AC 10 and 10 hit points. Heightening this spell by one spell level increases the tree's hit points by 10. Combining this spell with a champion reaction means a huge amount of damage reduction. And we all know how insane monster damage can be in Pathfinder 2e. Especially for spellcasters that don't have a lot of hit points. And even if the tree only lasts for one round, that's still a round where enemies aren't doing their full damage. For second level, we have Fungal Infestation. This spell has a range of touch and a 15 foot cone area. Creatures in the area take 2d6 persistent poison damage with a fortitude saving throw. If the target critically succeeds on their saving throw, they're unaffected, like normal for critical successes. If they succeed on their saving throw, they take half the persistent poison damage. If they fail their saving throw, then they take the full persistent poison damage, and while they're affected by this persistent poison damage, they gain weakness 1 to fire and weakness 1 to slashing damage. If a target critically fails their saving throw, then it's the same as if they had failed their saving throw, except double the persistent damage, and they gain weakness 2 to fire and slashing, as long as they're taking that damage. Heightening this spell by 2 spell levels increases the damage by 2d6 and the weakness by 1, or by 2 on a critical failure. 2d6 can be a lot of resistant damage, but what can really make this spell good for teamwork is the weakness that the enemy gains if they fail their saving throw. You wouldn't believe how many times I've run into a martial class that wanted to use a sword. As if fighters don't already do enough damage, this is going to facilitate any of their sword attacks. Plus, if you happen to have another spellcaster that specializes in fire, this is going to help them out too. But I would only take this spell if you have one of those or both in your party. Otherwise, persistent damage is just a way for enemies to go down quicker. Or I guess to get them to waste an action trying to get rid of it. But I've played a lot of Pathfinder 2e and I haven't run into an enemy that decided to do that at all whenever I've used persistent damage. For third level, of course we've got to talk about slow. I should think by now that everybody who has played this game knows what slow does. Because it's that good of a spell. But just in case you don't, it's on screen. 
This spell is probably the best debuff spell you can possibly get. I mean, what better way is there to stop enemies from attacking you using their actions than to deny them access to those actions in the first place? Plus, if you heighten this spell all the way up to 6th level, you can target up to 10 creatures. Plus, this spell doesn't even have the incapacitation trait, which means it's equally effective on almost all enemies. This is one you should pick up even if you're not a primal caster. Now let's talk about Tortoise and the Hare. I talked about this spell in my 4th and 5th level teamwork spells from Secrets of Magic video. You can check that out up in the card. Anyway, essentially this spell targets one ally and one enemy. And essentially casts haste on the ally and slow on the enemy. While this spell can't give the opponent slow 2 like slow can, to get the same effect of this spell, you would have to cast haste and slow. And that would take two rounds. Essentially, this spell is two very good teamwork spells in one, and therefore is very good for teamwork. The next spell I want to talk about is Chameleon Coat. This is another spell that is only available to primal casters. This spell targets up to eight creatures within 15 feet. For 10 minutes, the affected creatures get a plus three status bonus on stealth checks to hide. If you heighten this spell to 6th level, then any creature affected by this spell that quickly fails a stealth check to sneak within 30 feet of a creature that would spot it, then they only get a failure instead. Heightening this spell to 8th level increases the status bonus to plus 4 in addition to the 6th level effects. This spell is perfect to use with the Follow the Expert activity. Yes, the bonuses do stack. Fall the Expert gives a Circumstance bonus and a Proficiency bonus, while this spell gives a Status bonus. If your party has someone who's really good at stealth, but the rest of them are subpar at best, this is a spell you want to pick up. Now we have Nature's Reprisal. While this spell is situational, in the right area, this spell can be insane. This spell has a range of 120 feet, and targets all squares on the ground in an 80 foot burst that contain plants. Yes, that's right, 80 foot burst. Casting this spell causes the plants in the area to become difficult terrain for your enemies. Your allies are not affected by this spell. If the square was already difficult terrain due to plants, then it becomes greater difficult terrain and hazardous terrain to your enemies. Enemies that enter a square of difficult terrain caused by this spell take 6 poison damage each time they do so. This is difficult terrain for only your enemies. Yes, this spell only works if there are plants around, sure. So you're not going to be able to cast this spell if you're in a cave or a city or something. But if you're in the middle of the plains or in a forest, this spell is amazing. Difficult terrain was already good for teamwork, even with slowing down your allies as well. But this spell doesn't affect your allies. Plus it covers a huge area. With an area as huge as an 80 foot burst, you might as well be affecting the entire enemy party. If you're in the right area, of course. This is a spell you should definitely pick up, especially if you're outside a lot. The seventh level spell for this video is Mask of Terror. This spell targets one creature within 30 feet and lasts for one minute. Whenever any creature attempts a hostile action against the target of this spell, they must make a will save. That creature is then temporarily immune to this spell until the end of their next turn. On a successful saving throw, the creature is unaffected. On a failed saving throw, the creature becomes frightened too before they take their action. If the creature critically fails their saving throw, then they are frightened to and lose the action. If you heighten this spell to 8th level, you can target up to 5 creatures with this spell. If a creature uses a hostile action against multiple targets of this spell, it only needs to make one will save. Frightened is one of the best conditions in the game to put on enemies. And this spell affects every enemy that attacks the target. Excellent spell to put on a spellcaster or yourself, because you are a spellcaster too. And this spell might even make enemies waste an action, or multiple actions if they keep crit failing. At 8th level, we have Burning Blossoms. 
This spell creates a tree within 120 feet. The tree is 100 foot tall and its branches extend out to a radius of 30 feet. Any creature that ends its turn in the area of the tree's branches takes 66 fire damage. Any enemy that can see the tree, even if they're outside the tree's area, must make a will saving throw. Creatures that are fascinated by the tree must spend at least one of their actions each turn moving toward the tree. On a critical success, the creature is unaffected and immune for 24 hours. On a successful save, the creature is unaffected but must make a new will save at the end of its turn if it can still see the tree. On a failed save, the creature is fascinated with the tree until the end of its turn. If it can still see the tree after that duration, it must save again. On a critical failure, the creature is fascinated with the tree until the spell ends. The fire damage from the tree does not end the fascination, but other hostile actions do. If the fascination ends for a creature, then it must make a new saving throw at the end of its turn if it can still see the tree. This is a great spell to use against minions. Let's be honest here, the boss is probably going to make a save, and might even critically succeed. But this spell could take lackeys completely out of the fight, as long as your allies are smart enough to realize, oh, I'm taking them out of the fight and doing damage to them at the same time, so I shouldn't attack them. I should, at I should attack the boss. <laughs> yes, the enemies can still attack you. However, they are guaranteed to spend at least one of their actions moving toward the tree. And the tree is freaking huge. 100 foot tall means they can see it from quite a long ways away. And if you can move the boss away from that area, that essentially means they're wasting their entire turn moving toward the tree. And you're taking them out at the same time once they're under the tree. Then, once the boss is down, then you can go to the tree and start taking out enemies one by one. With ranged attacks, obviously, because you don't want to be under the tree. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to cast this spell all the time. You're probably not going to be able to cast this spell if you're in a cave. Or some other indoorsy area. But if you're outside, you're always going to be able to cast this spell. Alright, now let's talk about Nature's Enmity. This spell targets 5 creatures within 120 feet and has a 500 foot burst area. The spell lasts for 10 minutes. As long as the targets remain in the area, they suffer the following effects. Plants spring up from every surface. These plants give the targets a minus 10 circumstance penalty to speed as long as they stay adjacent to them. Also, aggressive animals attack unpredictably. At the start of each of its turns, each target rolls a DC 8 flat check. On a failure, it takes 2d10 slashing damage from swarming creatures with a basic reflex save. Also, a target is flat-footed for one round on any outcome other than a critical success. And finally, the targets lose any connection to nature or natural creatures. The targets must make a DC-5 flat check when casting primal spells or the spell fails. Furthermore, all animal or plant creatures become hostile to the targets. This includes any creatures that have a strong bond to the targets, such as an animal companion. This spell is really good. For one thing, unlike other spells on this video, this spell works anywhere. Secondly, the minus 10 foot penalty to speed is already enough for this spell to be good. But then you gotta factor in that this spell does damage every turn to the targets and puts other primal casters in a huge disadvantage. This spell basically makes other primal casters stupefied and turns their own animal companions and familiars against them. Plus with this spell's huge area and the minus foot 10 foot penalty to speed, it's almost impossible for the targets to get out of the area of this spell. If you get to the point where you can cast 9th level spells, this is definitely one to pick up. The last spell for this video is called Primal Herd. This spell has a range of 30 feet and targets you and up to 5 willing creatures. When casting this spell, you transform the targets into mammoths. They assume a huge battle form. Each target can dismiss the spell on themselves. I'm not going to go into too much detail on this, but they gain the statistics on screen. For their unarmed attacks, they use the attack modifier of their most favorable attack or unarmed strike. 
but they used the damage listed in the spell. Targets also gain the Trample activity. For three actions, you can move up to twice your speed, trampling any creature that is smaller than you. Any trampled creature takes the Foot Strike damage with a basic reflex save, with a DC of 19 plus the target's level. The great part about this spell is that it's completely voluntary. The spell only works on willing targets. Meaning if you don't want to transform, you don't. Also, each target can dismiss the spell on themselves whenever they want. Being able to give all your allies a battle form that uses their own attack modifiers is huge. Think about a fighter transforming with this spell. Or even someone like a barbarian or a monk. And that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Pathfinder 2nd Edition teamwork content. You can also check me out on Facebook and on Twitter. As I said before, you can also pledge me on Patreon for exclusive perks. Links are in the description. So until next time, remember, teamwork is vital.